समस्त जन कल्याणे निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गुरू ब्रह्म विध्वर वसुदेवसुत देव कंस चाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु ओके नाउ लास्ट टाइम वी हैड फिनिश्ड वे अर्जुन आस्क अ वेरी पर्टिनेंट क्वेश्चन यू नो ही आस्क ही आस्क Uh, that uh, later on was your birth see krishna had said that he in the beginning of creation taught the sun the same gyan so here he asks that later on was your birth and prior was the birth of vishwavan vishwavan is the sun how am i to understand that you taught this yoga in the beginning see appreciate this that you know the student in hinduism is always allowed to ask he is allowed to respect his logic power his intellect it is not a blind following so he says that you are saying that you taught it to the sun how come you taught it to the sun you born along with me you are my contemporary there seems to be a terrible anachronism uh in the first verse of this uh, chapter because he begins by saying i taught it to the sun and Krish- and arjun knows very well that krishna is born in his time he has played with him as a child and he has played with him and he is his friend so he asks him this question now verse number 5 says बहु निमे व्यतीताने जन्मानि तव चार्जुन तान्यहं वेद सर्वाणि न त्वं वेत्थ परंतप इट सेज कृष्ण इज आन्सरिंग हिम ही सेज मेनी बर्थ्स ऑफ माइन हैव पास्ड एज वेल एज योर्स ओ अर्जुन आय नो देम ऑल but you know them not o parantapa parantapa we have done one who is a scorcherer of foes you know so here as i told you that krishna is revealing a little bit of his identity a little bit of his visiting card he shows to arjuna to make him understand that he is not what arjuna thinks he is so uh, he says that you don't remember but i remember all the past births now the past births the moment you say there are many religions in the world that profess that there are no past births and no future births we have done this in quite in detail in chapter 2 and we will be doing it more so later on but here just to give you a reference that even darwin says the same thing he says the ego keeps on taking on different forms over centuries and centuries and thousands and thousands of years it evolves so what has evolved you know it cannot be that matter has evolved so when <coughs> darwin uses the word evolution or the theory of evolution it means the same ego keeps taking birth right from the unicellular organism in water and then slowly slowly the amphibian creatures slowly slowly the the land creatures and slowly slowly keeps on evolving so when you say this kind of thing but fortunately thank god that we forget the past the moment we take on another form or let us say the ego wears another uh, body or the ego takes on another mantle it forgets the past 
<coughs> even in Greek mythology, I think I made a reference before, they call it the river of forgetfulness, where when a human being dies, the soul crosses over the river of forgetfulness, which they call Styx, S-T-Y-X, Styx. And the moment he crosses that river, he forgets all his past lives. Now, just think about it, that supposing you remembered all your past lives, right? A child of 16 would be running after his great-grandmother, if she is still alive, that she was my wife in that birth. Now, what a situation, it can create a terrible situation. You can never feel comfortable in the family in which you are. You would be always trying to run after the family where you were born or go to the house and own uh, ownership of that house wherever you were born before. So it's good that you forget, I think. And now when Krishna says you don't remember, you don't do, the, how many people remember the day, or oh, I think nobody does, the day you were born? Do you remember? No, you don't. The first few years of your life, do you remember? No, you don't. It is all from what your mother has told you or your father has told you. That you were like this, and you were like this, and you used to talk like this, you used to behave like this. Hmm? So it is all secondary knowledge. It is not your memory. So your memory is very, very limited. In fact, even today, if I ask you, what did you have for breakfast last Tuesday? You don't remember. It's forgotten. It's gone. So then the thing is, and leave aside the fact that we keep placing things here and there and keep forgetting them, that is, uh, that just look at the memory, how short-lived the memory is. So when he says here that you do not remember your past lives, but I remember those lives, then that is what he is, because he is the pure consciousness. He is the infinite reality who has taken birth, and he will elaborate it later on. Hmm? He has the freedom to take on any kind of matter envelopments because he rules matter. He is the one who has created, otherwise not. So, but, you know, he doesn't believe that he is this uh, egocentric individuality. Krishna doesn't believe that. It is like this, that when a father is playing playing, uh, behaving like a horse and making his little son sit on his back and the father goes down on all fours pretending to be a horse which the uh, little child is riding. Does the father for a minute forget that he is not the father? He knows he is the father. Do you think that he ever misunderstands that he is the horse? No, he doesn't. He has willingly become a horse and is acting like a horse. Similarly, the infinite, the ultimate reality, it acts as though it was a human being, takes on the form of a human being, and acts like a human being. So that is what he is saying. See, I'll read again. Many births of mine have passed as well as of yours. When he says births, take them as avatars. Whenever the Lord has come down, willingly taken birth. And I know them all, but you know them not, O Parantapa. Hmm? So, come to the next verse. Ajo pisanvyatma. Sorry. Ajo pisan avyatma. Bhuta Namishwaropisan Prakratim Swamadhishthaya Sambhavamyatma Mayaya. The word uses, used by Krishna is Sambhava. Sambhava, we all know. Ki ye Sambhav nahi hai. You say, na? Sambhav nahi hai, that means it is not possible. Right? Now, he makes it possible, but the word he is using is sambhava, sambhava, 
Hmm? And he creates him his own self. He has not used the word, I am born. See, aj, 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 means, aj means unborn. So, ajopi sannavya yatma. He says, though I am unborn, look at the translation also. Though I am unborn of imperishable nature, and though I am the Lord of all beings, yet ruling over my own nature, I am born by my own maya. Hmm. Now then you say that what about all the Ram Janma Bhumi? What about the Krishna Janma Bhumi? And all, yes, true. This is where they manifested. That is the place where Rama or Krishna manifested. Even if you read Tulsi Das's Ram Charitmanas, the stuti, that the stuti of the time when he is manifested is by Praga. <coughs> By Pragata Kripala Dina Dayala. It doesn't say that he was born. Okay? By Pragata Kripala. Or also Krishna. When there is a description, wherever it is in the Bhagavad Purana or here, there, of Krishna's birth, it is not that he was born as such. Suddenly they say there was light in the prison and the doors opened and the Lord manifested in a big... And then the mothers have always to tell them that please don't show me this form. I had prayed for a child. So you please become a baby. Please become a child so that I can act the part of a mother. And here it is, even in the Tulsi Ramayana, when he says, uh, it, it is Nija Ikcha Nirmit Tanu. Maya gun gopar. He is beyond Maya. He is beyond guna. And he is beyond the Indriyas. Maya gun gopar. And nije ikcha nirmitatan. The birth or the manifestation, let me say, the manifestation of the Supreme is not because of the same reason that you and I are born into this world. Matter takes on a body only when there are vasanas to be exhausted, when there is a desire to be exhausted. Now then, you say that there is no desire in the Supreme. So how does he manifest? Hmm? He is not bound by matter. Nija ikcha nirmitatanu. This is what this verse is also saying. That yet ruling over my own nature... I am born by my own Maya. Okay. Now he has used the word Maya. Maya is a strange thing. You know, Maya cannot be described. The even the word Maya means that which is not. The Sanskrit word Maya means that which is not. Okay. So, without what is not... Hmm? He seems to be. Okay. He seems to be. I'll give you the example of a magician. Magician shows you so many tricks on the stage. Doesn't it seem to you that this is what is happening? Hmm? It seems to you that it is real, but it is not real. And who is the lord of that seeming? The Lord is the magician. The magician is showing you the trick. He is creating an illusion for you because he is the master of illusion. So here you have totally the master of illusion. You do not have the victim of illusion. You and I are the victim of illusion, not the master of illusion. So Maya is something like this, that it seems to be, but it is not. Huh? So he, he shows you that he is. So though I am unborn, he says right in the beginning, huh? Ajopi, he says, that I am not, uh, I am unborn and of imperishable nature. See, that which is born is always perishable. So if you take the Lord to be born, then he also dies. 
you know, uh, 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 there were some foreigners who asked Gurudev this question. I was also present there. And they said that, Swamiji, uh, our God has a historical date. Buddha has a date. Jesus has a date. Muhammad has a date. But your Lord has got no dates of the day, time when he was born and the death date. So Gurudev said, you know, Gurudev used to roar and he said, if your God is historical, he must be dead by now. He says, I am not talking of the one that was born and the one who died. That is just a form which the Lord chose to manifest. I am talking of the supreme reality. And he said, don't miss the point, my boy. Now see, here is the same thing that Krishna is himself saying about himself. He says that I was not born. I was never born. I only manifested, don't forget the word Sambhava. And Sambhava how? By Maya. Here it is, see, Sambhavamya, Sambhavamyatma uh, Mayaya. So with Maya, I come into being. I try to manifest. I show myself as a human being, which I am not. So mm, we are here always to slave it out uh, on the dictates of Maya. But he is the master of Maya. So that. Now come to the next verse. He says that, okay, even if you manifest, fine, understood, that you are not born, you manifest. Hmm? Now, also, see, even in Christianity, Christ must have manifested. You know, where the place of his birth, they say, just like we have Ram Jan Janmabhumi, they also have uh, the place where Christ was born. And they call it born. But also, don't forget, Christianity has that concept of the immaculate conception. So it is not a physical thing that has happened. It has manifested. And the Supreme always manifests. He is not of flesh and blood. So though he seems to be, of course he seems to be. But here, he says, okay, now supposing you manifest. He says, you know, the there is a question in Arjuna's mind which the teacher can easily read in a student. Then when they start looking a little confused and the teacher understands that they are still questioning. So what is the question? The question is that what is the purpose of your taking this incarnation? Why have you incarnated? Or why have you manifested? So the here he says, the answer Krishna gives, he says, Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam srijamyaham yada yada hi dharmasya yada yada means whenever whenever okay so it says whenever there is decay of righteousness O Bharata, and the rise of unrighteousness, then I manifest myself. The divine takes care of righteousness. It takes care of evolution. It, it, it takes care of uh, nobility, trying to perfect itself into the highest possible peak of evolution. So he says that whenever there is decay of righteousness. So here he uses the word dharma. I am saying righteousness because here dharma translates not as religion. Dharma here translates that when a human being by righteous living is trying to evolve to get liberated from this great cycle of death and birth, death and birth, birth and death or whatever. So here it is that whenever there is a decay of righteousness, hmm, that means the values go down, people lose faith in things, 
people behave like animals or people have a materialistic outlook on life totally that is when the values go down you know you have these stories in the puranas and you have these stories in bhagavat puran of haranyaksha and haranyakashipu two brothers you know haranyaksha means an eye for gold aksh eye and hiranya means uh, gold hmm? so hiranyaksha means one who only has an eye for gold so all those people whose whole life is spent only in trying to earn money or that is the main objective of their life only to earn and amass money they are hiranyaksha and hiranyakashipu a uh, wrapped in gold hiranyakashipu means wrapped in gold who is wearing uh, gold that also is the same thing it is same thing that uh, materialistic outlook that is what it represents hmm? that somebody who has only an eye for money who has an eye for materialistic treasures is called these two so he says ki whenever such people are born and the whole world is full of such people i take birth hmm? and he says when does it happen when when the values are going down in abhyutthanam adharmasya adharma adharma opposite of dharma so when <coughs> unrighteousness is uh, rising abhyutthan abhyutthan means the rise of okay so abhyutthanam adharmasya tadatmanam srijamiham look again the word he doesn't say i am born at that time he says i create myself srijan srijan you know srijan means to create so here he says srijamyaham i create myself look at the clarity with which he has said this thing that i am not born i am not born i create myself hmm? so uh, dharma being the law of being when a human being is evolving to become one with this law of being to become one with this ultimate reality that is called dharma and the opposite of that hmm, which helps you to devolve is called a dharma huh? and here he says see uh okay so that is what he says over here now this is the let, let's come to the next verse ha huh? now the next verse says paritranaay sadhunam vinashaay cha duskritam dharma sansthapanarthay sambhavami yuge 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 means from time to time whenever the time arrives now since he says that the dharm goes down and uh, righteousness goes down unrighteousness is rising i get born so the question you know somebody asked this question to gurudev and said that swami ji don't you think that this is exactly these days is the right time for the lord to manifest and gurudev was never short of words so he immediately shot back which of you is noble enough to become yashoda which of you is noble enough to become devaki tell me and there was complete silence is there anybody who can be call himself vasudev no so even that has to manifest a vasudev and a devaki have to manifest for the lord to be born through that matter that matter has to be very very pure and that is why mothers are worshiped in hinduism because all the great people all the good people that the mothers you know all the soldiers that sacrifice their life on the border just imagine i really worship their mother that she could produce this son great son who sacrificed his own self for the sake of so many others so anybody who does a very very righteous action to benefit a whole lot of mankind even all these big saints huh? ramakrishna paramhans vivekananda 
just imagine all these great gautam buddha this one that one you and swami chinmayananda swami shivananda swami tapuvan maharaj all these are what they are there to uplift humanity from where it was and you know how many people this knowledge benefits you know how many people christ has benefited how many people buddha has benefited you know but they their mother and their father they has to be a cause because you know matter can only come as a cause now here just imagine krishna has himself you know he confesses confesses to his own look this is a confession of a desire what is the desire paritranay sadhu nam vinashay cha dushkritam there has to be a desire for matter to take form now the infinite has no desire but since the hiranya garbha or the total vasanas are crying for a savior there is a crying need for a savior the savior manifests as to fulfill that desire now here see paritranaya sadhuna i'll read the translation for the protection of the good and for the destruction of the wicked and for the establishment of righteousness i am born in every stage here the translation is born but look at the word the word is sambhavami the word in the in the verse is sambhavami yuge yuge so he is not born as such as you and i understand birth it's not like that now paritranay sadhu nam the first question that arises who is a sadhu he comes to save the sadhus protect the good he says protect the good now sadhu is being called the good who is a good human being a good human being is he who is a blessing to mankind whose life is a blessing to people around him he is a good human being you know and it is because of him that so many people are saved it is because of him that so many people can <clears throat> live a peaceful life a happy life a joyous life a materialistically rich life all those people are good people so he says paritranay sadhu nam not the one who takes on the clothes of a sadhu ravan also became a sadhu remember when he came to abduct sita ji he ke he became a sadhu and that is not a sadhu it is a wicked man in a fancy dress of a sadhu to fool people don't we have plenty of them these days the papers are full of them that people who take on the garb of priesthood whether it is churches or it is mosques or or it is uh, uh, temples wherever they are they take on the garb of a saintly person and then they cheat people so that is not a sadhu a sadhu is a person that who never com- compromises on his values he lives those values every single day that is a sadhu so he comes to save such people paritranay uh, sadhu nam but there is another purpose also what is that vinashay cha dushkritam that means the destruction of the wicked dusht 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 kritam ha dushkritam means those evil doers krit is work deed hmm? so dushkritam means evil deeds bad deeds so those who perform wrong deeds bad deeds harmful deeds hmm? destructive deeds they are here called uh, dusht he says over here to destroy the wicked now this very thing comes under a lot of attack they say why should the lord destroy why should the lord come for destruction that means he is a violent lord see 
just as non violence has a place rightful non violence and rightful violence they both have a place please understand if we did not need violence to protect our frontiers no country would have an army armies are trained to kill a soldier is trained to kill he is expert in the art of killing whether with with weapon or minus his weapon that is his training why and every country has it isn't it ha huh? why do you have an armed chokidar standing on your gate to protect you even if it requires violence to stop a criminal from entering your house to stop a thief from entering your house that violence has to be done please understand why do you kill mosquitoes why do you kill cockroaches why do you get your house disinfected or with pesticide to to exterminate termites or bugs because they are all destructive to you and when you meet anything that is destructive to you you have got to meet it with violence otherwise they will be violent on you now this ahimsa thing hinduism says you will say oh yeah argue ahimsa parmo dharma right that is from hinduism ahimsa parmo dharma ahimsa a whole lot of literature in hinduism is there on ahimsa and it is also there on hinsa because hinsa is as necessary as ahimsa i am not advocating it i am not saying see hinsa done purposelessly is hinsa but when it is done defensively for protection then you cannot call it hinsa even the courts forgive the man who kills another for self protection you know when this plea is taken in the courts that he came at me with a dagger and he was going to kill him kill me and so i defended myself and in that defense he got killed the courts do not hang you because your motive is not to kill your motive is to protect yourself be very clear on this in the mahabharat very clearly there is a verse which says that it is as sinful not to kill a criminal as it is to uh, kill the innocent so if you killing the innocent it is a sin if you are not killing a criminal that is also a sin because that criminal will destroy society right stop and for that very purpose there is think about it there is no hindu god or goddess who does not carry a weapon think ram ram ji is famous for his bow and arrow and he did kill so many demons who used to not let people do their yagnas and havans and worship isn't it that was one of his purposes of taking avatar to destroy the wicked krishna krishna sudarshan chakra right hmm ganesh ji farsa shiv ji trishul hmm kali has got a mace and she has got a talwar and she's got now you think of any of the gods and goddesses they all have weapons why there is a purpose of the weapon na? this is the purpose paritranay sadhu naam for defense you need a weapon paritranay sadhu naam and vinashay cha dushkritam dharma sansthapnarthay sambhavami yuge yuge so to protect the good and to destroy evil i take birth again and again and again hmm? now uh 
okay so here it is this that uh, there has to be no hesitation in destroying the wicked destruction of the wicked becomes a duty and as he says here that only when you destroy the wicked then the next stage can come which is dharma sansthapnartha the establishment of righteousness the establishment of what is correct and what should be done and that is the reason why i take birth again and again and again hmm? and so here he says see uh, uh, hinduism you know then you say where, when you say ahinsa parmo dharma to ahinsa is not offensive it is only defensive please understand uh, hinsa sorry hinsa is not offensive it is defensive and there are various kinds of hinsa and ahinsa that are listed even hinsa of speech in hinduism is regarded as hinsa see people are very adept at trying to uh, be sarcastic trying to pinpoint a defect in somebody trying to uh, denigrate somebody or criticize somebody that is all hinsa vak hinsa it is called ha huh? the uh, hinsa violence of speech it is called similarly physical hinsa hmm? uh, and um, uh, emotional hinsa uh, all these things are listed uh, there are almost uh, 24 kinds of different hinsas listed in the shastras we will not go into those but here hinsa has a purpose over here it is not that krishna is a war monger and that krishna is a violent man krishna himself says that i have come to kill of course he has come to kill and he has come to destroy those whom you and i cannot destroy but they are not letting us live the kind of life that we would like to live so krishna here confesses the initial desire that all of us have that dharma should be established and the wicked should be <clears throat> exterminated the wicked should be killed so that the purpose is dharma sansthapna the purpose is the establishment of righteous causes the establishment of good deeds so whatever is there happening around you is that is what the lord takes into account and here now so you know he is trying to show to arjuna very well that you are also there for a purpose just like i have taken avatar for a purpose huh? the the suggestion to arjuna is that that you standing here as the commander in chief of an army are here to establish righteousness it this mahabharat yuddh was a dharma yuddh right hmm. so this dharma yuddh is to establish righteousness and you have to do your duty just like i am doing my duty just like the same way i have killed so many demons is what krishna is trying to say and you also are there to kill those who are unrighteous like duryodhan you are there to kill so many others who are siding with unrighteousness right so this is a victory of the divine over the undivine over the uh, the victory of dharma over adharma and it is for those reasons that the lord takes birth and the lord i will again sorry using the wrong word he doesn't take birth he makes himself possible he he is uh, here ha huh, okay so you know uh, he is also trying to make arjuna understand that i am not that same young shepherd boy that you used to play with by saying all this he is also telling arjuna that understand who i am you have to treat me as a teacher which i am over here i am not your companion i am not just the one who used to play with you crack all kinds of funny jokes with you hmm? tease you but i am not that so recognize me as your teacher recognize me as the one who is liberating you who is giving you a knowledge that will make you evolve 
एंड मेक यू डू योर ड्यूटी एज अ धर्म संस्थापना अर्थ है यू हैव टू इस्टेब्लिश धर्म फॉर विच आई एम हेल्पिंग यू टू दिस मच फॉर टूडे पूर्णमद पूर्णमिद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्णमादा पूर्णमे वशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि श्री गुरभ्यो नम हरि